Stayed up till about one o'clock this morning editing after doing that cutout last night. Kind of dragging a little this morning. It's about eight o'clock or so. Started out early with a little competition motivation. Watch Mr. Ed's latest video. And now I gotta go check on those bees I dumped last night after I stopped and grabbed some breakfast somewhere. Well, let's see what they're looking like. I didn't put a lot in there to entice them to stay. It looks like they... Mm, I, don't know. I don't think they stayed. Nope. Oh, what's that on the side over here? Oh, crap. I know where my queen's at. I'm going to have to find her, cage her, and uh, lock them up. That's why I lock them in for 48 hours, because they will not stay a lot of the time. Nobody wants to play nice today. I'm robbing a frame of brood out of here. Put in that box, which I'm gonna sit on the ground in front of that in front of that cluster and let them walk in. <clears throat> but as soon as I popped the lid on that box, they started uh, jumping off the box and eating my lunch. So we're gonna light up the smoker and rob that brood. Set that box on the ground, and I gotta go to work. I don't know if you can tell how honey loaded this thing is. This year's been a pretty good year for honey. <clears throat> These have only been in this box for, I don't know, three weeks. They need a super on them. I robbed a honey frame and a very tiny bit of brood out of that box. Like I said, they've only been in that box for a very short time. So they're just getting going good themselves, but I got eggs, young larva, a little bit of cat brood. So right here, my honey frames right here, two empties, brood. I fill the rest up with empties, freshly waxed. These are all clean, newly waxed foundations. Now I'm just gonna set the box here in the shade, they ought to catch a whiff of it pretty soon, start walking to it. I'm gonna uh, make a quick once over look for the queen. If I don't see her, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna stand out here all day looking. I got things to do, so. So I'm basically done here this morning. I robbed those brood and honey frames. They're starting to march to the box. And this, my friends, is why I do 48 hour lockdown on any swarm catch or cutout, unless I know where the queen is and I've caged her. And on this one, obviously I have a queen or they wouldn't be on the ground because that's where she's at. Uh, I haven't seen her. I know for a fact she's in here because this is not characteristic of a colony with no queen. They don't bunch on the ground like this. So this is why I do the 48 hour lockdown. Swarm catch or hive removal prevent little situations like this. They're starting to go to the box and I'm good with that. I'll come back and look at them later on this evening. They're robbing out some old comb in the back of my truck. <laughs> Everything's cool, they're just robbing out. Getting started on a little apartment hive removal this morning. They're in the ceiling right there in the corner they're coming in by the deck out back let me step out back and show you what kind of activity it looks like it's going to be a real strong busy swarm i think they they started seeing them a little over a week ago i think they just moved in so i was going to go through the upstairs floor to begin with and and i uh, went upstairs and drilled and it's some fairly new apartments got all the latest and greatest code requirements so it's the uh floor upstairs is two layers of three-quarter plywood plus a layer of fire break and so i just decided it would be way way easier to come in and and uh cut a little hole in the ceiling that popcorn texture is easy enough to match back got my floor covered up got their nice leather and little end table covered up 
And uh, I've been sitting here talking on the phone while I've been relaxing, getting myself together, fixing to get started on this thing. Got my Dremel with my little curved bit. This is a drywall saw for anybody who don't know that. These things cut fast, but they make a little bit of a mess. These don't quite make as, as much of a mess and you can do more precision cutting. And uh, they're, they're just a little slower. As I'm making these cuts, I'm cutting at, at a slight angle. On this one, I'm cutting at a slight angle this way, this one, slight angle this way. Same other side, because uh, a lot of times if you make a straight cut, you think you're straight and you're in the wrong way and your, uh, your piece you cut out, if you're trying not to, to uh, destroy it, it's locked in because of the bevels you put on it by accident. So you gotta cut purposefully angled the right direction so when you cut that piece, it just drops. I'm about to pop it open. So I'm gonna darken it up in here as much as I can to try to keep some of the bees that are gonna come inside from coming in, from being encouraged to come in. Yeah, I cross I frame and they got joists running this way instead of this way. I hear them. We're in the right spot. It's always, to me, it's always nerve wracking to cut open somebody's ceiling when you're pretty sure, but you're not 100% positive. Cause uh, you can look like a hero or you can look like a fool. Thankfully, we're not looking like a fool on this one. Just as I suspected, a nice size uh, swarm moved in. Probably got a half a basketball size of comb built in there if I had to make a good educated guess. And they're not gonna be too hard to reach. We got an expert joining us today, Mr. Jason Cummins. Oh, I wouldn't say expert, Randy. <laughs> I mean, how many removals you do a week? A dozen or so? Oh, man. <laughs> Three to five, three to five. Yeah, just like you told me. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. That's kind of what I was expecting. Yeah. And I'm thankful that's what it was. Yes, sir. <laughs>
to as a blind removal. I can get my head up in here, but I still can't really see what I'm doing. I'm working around the frame in there. So what you can see on video is much more than what I can see. I'm just having to feel around, grab what I can see, and back what I can see, but I'm, I'm pretty much doing this by feel because there's just not a lot of room without cutting uh, the ceiling support and things like that. There's just not a lot of room to get up in there and work, and I'm not going to do that much damage so it's easier just to feel it and get it done I've only gotten one sting at this point it was in my side it, just a bee that came out it was mad not not a hot hive or anything by by any means they got you know they're out here trying to go to the light they're not getting on me much ones that fall out of the ceiling and, and fall on me are about the, the only ones that are getting on me. Real soft new wax. There's no way to save any of it as far as framing it up and uh, putting it in a box. So these are gonna start out again just as a new swarm would. I'll put them in a box with probably a, one frame of drawn comb just to give them something to start on. But uh, we're in a good flow right now so they'll recover fine. Good, real, real nice size colony. But the comb is so soft, it's like, it's, it's like handling wet bread or something. <laughs> you know, there's no way to keep it in one piece. As I'm trying to pull it out, it's just falling apart and, and uh, crumbling, sinking into the insulation. We got a little bit of weather coming in. I didn't look at the forecast, didn't realize it was going to rain because it was sunshiny this morning. But uh, they've been pretty, pretty good to me. Only one sting so far. It was unsolicited. I got about 500 bees clustered up out here on the outside, probably another thousand or so inside. Just letting them gather up again because when you start vacuuming, it kind of scatters them all out a little bit. But once I, once they cluster up again, I'll vacuum them up and I'm um, pretty, pretty well done. I got one little bitty piece of comb left to cut out and then um, heading to the house. I hear thunder and the wind's picking up, so I'm probably I, don't know, I might be setting these in a nuke in the rain. Hey, right, bees are out. Ceiling's put back. That's the vacuum here running, sitting on the back seat. Part of that's my air conditioner. 
I got that back running just circulating cool air on the bees and uh, got the air conditioner running and circulating some cool air on me because I'm burnt up baby put me a dry shirt on it's a done deal time to blow this popsicle stand I just gotta stop and put some all my mask over all my masking uh, what do you call it? Not masking. I'm going to cover up plastic in the dumpster because I don't want it. It's got honey and sheetrock dust and stuff cheap enough that uh, I just cut it off and get some more. little update on this back here. I've been running it almost non-stop for about four hours now. Right now it's at a, running at about probably 30 percent um of course that entire four hours hadn't been at full power it's been probably probably for i don't know 45 50 minutes to an hour at full power and the rest of the time just running uh laying on the ground or in my truck with the bees uh, with the air blowing across them to keep them cool but uh so far no hiccups it's doing great i got a, a bucket full of bees in, in my truck and none of them are getting loose in my truck i just got it running just keep them keep them inside the hose and keep them cool sitting here under the canopy at the food mart surprised they ain't called the cops on me i've been sitting here returning phone calls sitting in the shade i just went in and got me a cold water and a pecan praline <laughs> and now i'm headed to the house set these young ladies up in this nuke right here and get out the way and let them do their thing. It's about the world. It's about the world. Champion, a champion. champion.